My name is Katie Dennis, and I run a program called Project Time Off. It is to get Americans to take more vacations, so a lot of people open their doors to me, which is great. Um, we are not taking a lot of vacation, and it is a little bit of a problem, and I run a research initiative, so I'm going to go through a lot of numbers, but I promise I'm not going to try to bore you to death with numbers. I'm going to tell some stories. First story I want to tell, we're going to take it way, way back to Disney. So when I was 11, the biggest thing in the world to me was to go to Disney World. It was all I wanted, but I was about to age out of the system, right? Once you hit 12, your considerations change. It's all Seventeen Magazine and boys and things like that. I would have been too old. But I'm one of five kids. I'm the oldest of five kids. So the youngest kid had to be able to walk through the park, and I had to be not too old to be jaded. So it was a very, very careful thread my parents had to weave, and they actually managed it. So just like the commercial, um, except this time it was a 47-pound camcorder and a garage light because we didn't have iPhone technology then. They woke us up and they said, okay, we're going today. Today is the day. And it was fantastic. And that is me in the throes of my awkward phase. And it takes a lot of, a lot of courage to put that up for people who you don't know. But, but we went and it was fantastic. And it wasn't just fantastic because it was Disney. It was fantastic because my dad worked really hard. He wasn't there for every soccer game. He wasn't there for every dinner. But he prioritized vacations. Fast forward 20 years. This is my daughter. This is a picture of my daughter at her Halloween parade. It is a picture that I got texted to me on my phone because I didn't go. I didn't go because I didn't think it was important enough. I didn't think that it rose to the level of asking for a morning off. A morning off. Now, maybe if I'd actually asked, I would have found out that it was a fine and not a big deal, but I didn't even bother to ask. And I missed it. And that, for me, was a problem. And I didn't realize it was a problem until I saw this picture. It's a problem for a lot of people, and it illustrates a difference between the way my dad behaved and the way I behaved. So from the 1970s to about 2000, we were very, very static in our vacation usage. We took about 20.3 days on average. And then in 2000, we start tanking. And in that differential, we have lost almost a full work week of vacation time. This is a relatively recent phenomenon. A lot of people say, oh, well, we're never going to be France. We don't need to be France. We can be the US 15 years ago. We have changed markedly in a very short period of time. And if we keep this up, we'll be out of vacation by 2046. So if you all are doing the math on that, you're not going to be retired by then. It's time to make a change. So I think that's something I don't want to be out of vacation. That's not, not in my uh, best interest. So I want to do a quick poll. Uh, for those of you who have downloaded the app, did you leave vacation days unused last year? And we're going to see how you measure up to everyone else nationally. I think it should show up somewhere. Is it working? OK, there it is. <laughs> All right, we'll give it a second. It's actually amazing if it stays that way. Oh. <laughs> All right, so we've got about 66%. We're going to go with that as our final number. All right, so you're actually worse. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, don't know to, I don't know how to say it. 55% uh, of Americans left time on the table on average last year. This room needs to do a little bit of work, as it turns out. Um, that's more than half of people are not taking advantage of the vacation time that they earn. But worse than that, that yields 658 million vacation days go unused. That is a massive number. That is 1.8 million years, if you want to break it down that way, which puts us roughly before humans existed, which is staggering. The worst part of this 658 million days, though, two-thirds of the, or I'm sorry, one-third of those days were forfeited. So you can't roll them over, you can't bank them, you can't be paid out for them. They are purely lost. You are working as a de facto volunteer for your employer. It is great to volunteer. Plant a tree, though. Don't volunteer for your employer. So I think that's what we really need to start thinking about, is what are we losing? One more quick poll question. Do you work when you're on vacation? I'm assuming the laughter means this is going to be a high number. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna say it's a commanding yes. We'll, we'll call that overwhelming in the statistical world. You're not alone, most people do it seems these days. Um, what's interesting is when a lot of people look at that, why did we start tanking in 2000, people want an explanation. Why did this happen? So we've looked at a couple different trend lines on this. If you look at the red, that's our lost vacation since 2000. If you look at the blue, that's our connectivity. That's our internet adoption rate. It is a near perfect X. We've also looked at economic factors, because a lot of people assume the economy is going to dictate our vacation usage, and found there's actually no correlation. So if you look at consumer confidence, unemployment, none of that lines up. What does line up is connectivity. The internet is not a bad thing. The internet brings us wonderful, wonderful things. I think we've seen a lot of that. You know, the technology, what we can learn, it's amazing. We're not looking to regress. However, when it comes to vacation usage, we have to be intentional about our time. 
we are not going to find time anymore. This notion of finding time is false. We have to make it. And I think that's what we need to realize is that we have all the tools to work anywhere and it makes it so much easier to feel that we are indispensable, that we cannot get away, that it is not possible. So I think what we need to be clear about is prioritizing that time. And that's a challenge. Biggest reason people aren't taking their time off is fear of returning to a mountain of work. This is not some myth. You can watch it happening in real time in your hand. It is a very, very actual thing. We understand this. There's, there's not a whole lot you can do to say that that's not going to happen other than employers giving great tools to employees to manage it. Huffington Post has this thing called the email detox program. If you are a Huffington Post employee, you can elect to be part of a program that will automatically respond with an out of office on steroids that says, thank you for your message, it will be deleted. People get, yeah, audible gasp, I get it. <laughs> but what's great about it is it says, here's the contact, otherwise I will be back on this day and you can get back with me then. What that does is cut down on the time you waste when you return, dealing with all the emails that have been resolved, don't matter, or you're just deleting. It saves hours of productivity on the back end. It is not for everyone. I don't think it's for me, but I think it's an interesting concept and a great way for an employer to help manage some of those fears. The other things I think are purely fears. We see some of this post-recessionary hangover, a little bit of ego, like a lot at play here when people say no one else can do the job, really. The, they say that they don't want to be seen as replaceable. They want to show complete dedication. There's a whole range of these things that are just kind of these lingering fears. And they've started to fester. All those fears have turned into a cultural stigma around vacation. So this is an article from Daily Finance. And it's supposed to help you take your time off, but everything that I see in this article says you're doing something wrong and it's bad. Because the headline is how to use your vacation days without fearing for your job. It's right there in the headline that there's something to be feared. It says to be reachable. It says to train your replacement. That's inspiring a lot of confidence. And have someone watching your back. So none of that says, yes, go ahead, please do it. We have a culture of silence in this workplace. Two thirds of employees, when you ask them what they hear from their employer about vacation, they say nothing, really not much of anything. Um, I think an interesting example of this, I was talking to Chris Nacetta, who's the CEO of Hilton, and he's got six daughters, so that's, that makes for a busy home life, a little chaotic. Um, he also is a very busy person as the CEO of Hilton, so he doesn't have a lot of you know, time to get work done, because he's you know, probably in bad meetings. Um, <laughs> So he was talking about how he started coming in on Sundays because he was just trying to peel through some work and just get it done. And then he noticed some other people were coming in on Sundays. And more people started coming in on Sundays because he was sending emails and things like that so people knew he was in the office on Sundays. And before you know it, he had accidentally created a six-day work week. He didn't mean to. There was no implied, yes, you should be here on Sundays. But when the boss is sending a nonverbal signal that's that loud, you think, Maybe I should be there on Sunday too. And he had to walk that back. He had to go talk to everyone and say, no, 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 no. This is not an expectation. I don't actually want you here. This is my time. <laughs> so it was one of those things that was an accident, but it happens all the same. This culture of silence is on display, I think, when we talk about unlimited vacation. This is the media's favorite topic. Everyone loves talking about it. It's very polarizing. I actually love talking about it because people have a clear opinion on unlimited vacation. Unlimited vacation does not work 99% of the time because it is not communicated appropriately. People don't have a communications plan that goes with their unlimited vacation plan, and they don't know what to do. So when you look at Richard Branson, who rolled out unlimited vacation at Virgin, the man is the physical manifestation of a vacation. When he says unlimited, you're like, yeah, I think that's about right. He owns an island. Everything about him is supportive. But the Tribune Media Company did effectively the same policy about a week after Virgin rolled theirs out. But they had a 25-point checklist of what you had to do if you wanted to take a day off. <laughs> And that did not work as well. You actually had to know six months ahead of time if you were gonna be sick. So <laughs> within a week, it was branded the no vacation policy and they ended up rolling it back because they did not communicate it the right way. The way that we go about this matters. So why should employers care? Why, why does it even matter to them? It seems like more of an individual issue. Aren't we just you know, hung up on ourselves? Not entirely, because we don't talk about it this is a huge way to get the best version of the employee you hired. And that's really what we all want, is the best version of the employee that we hired. Creativity and innovation, probably the biggest thing. Um, our favorite talking point now is Lin-Manuel Miranda, who created Hamilton, the, no, the musical apparently no one can see because you can't get tickets, but anyway, created it while on vacation. 
So this was his idea. Instagram, Dropbox, these companies were thought of on vacation. So when we think about how much of an innovation economy we are and how reliant we are on new ideas, we have all sorts of programs, entrepreneur in residence programs, nap pods, God knows what else, and those are all fine ideas. But the vacation policy you probably have on the books right now, if you would just encourage it, you would start to see those results almost immediately and it would cost you nothing. Um, the other thing is attra talent attraction and retention. The economy is improving. The talent market is getting you know, much more heated up. It's hard to find employees. Maybe not, I don't know. I think you've solved for that. So, <laughs> um, But it's one of those things that it can mean a lot. And when you survey the C-suite on where they think vacation falls on the list of perks, it's actually not at the top for them. It's about number four. When you ask employees, it's number one or two in almost every survey. So don't undervalue what vacation means to employees. It can mean a whole lot, and it can be the easiest way to emphasize something positive that is already there. You don't have to create it. You don't have to budget anything additional for it. It's an amazing way to just go after it. So I think vacation is a positive thing for individuals. It absolutely is for companies. And many of you have probably seen the MasterCard commercial with the little kids saying over 400 million vacation days went unused. That was our old number. <laughs> uh, they used our research as a jumping off point for that campaign. But what was really great about it is that they did a whole internal campaign because they didn't just want to be out there publicly. They wanted to you know, act the way that they were professing other people should. So internally, they rolled out their one more day campaign. It has become part of their vernacular. Employees say, I'm going to take one more day. They tweet it, they talk about it, they are all into it. And for a company of their size, they went from 4.2 days average unused down to 3.9. It is a sea change for a company of that size. And that was within six months. So we haven't checked in with them since that six months period is up. And they get absolutely more productivity, happier employees. Happy employees are engaged and they stay longer. And there's not much of a better reason than that. So. Thank you very much. I am with Project Time Off. Please check out our research. We have all sorts of wonderful stats available.